Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. We've got an Xbox One S here, um, and I think it's got a failed hard drive in it. Now I'm not really a console repair dude. I'm, I've tried with consoles a couple of times. I've dabbled on several occasions, and I've not really made that much headway in console repairs. Um, however, uh, the cl client bought this one in, and they, they complained that they couldn't connect to Xbox Live with it and apparently they had to keep resetting it to make it work and things like that. And so I, um, I've i just plugged it in and fired it up and just had a quick wander around the menus. And it just felt really slow. And like, I couldn't even get it to t connect to Wi-Fi or anything like that. You know, it would search for Wi-Fi networks and I'd sort of look away and then look back and it kicked me back to the, to the dashboard again. I'm like, what? We were connecting to Wi-Fi, what's going on? And I think I can hear a click of death coming from the hard drive in this thing. But yeah, I don't know. At any rate, I think the hard drive in this one has failed. So we're going to take it apart, pull the hard drive out, and do diagnostics on it. So um, as I mentioned, I am not a console expert. So this is probably going to be a pretty rough video, but I'm sure we can figure it out. I have taken Xbox One S's apart before, so I've got a rough idea on what to expect. But yeah, let's go on a journey. So the, the warranty seal on this one is broken, so that would imply that this one's been apart before. Why, I don't know, um, but yeah, that's a thing that exists. Um, so I think, I think the bottom panel of this just pries off. So let's just go out to a wider shot and adjust the focus. And I believe that we can start just by prying this bottom panel off This would normally be more difficult, but where this one has been apart before, I don't think it's going to put up too much of a fight. I'm just going to use a couple of prime tools just to start making headway. There we go. That was a promising click. Right, be a little bit careful around the front just so we don't clip off the uh, connect button or the USB port or anything like that. This sounds worse than it is, by the way. It's because I'm just pinging off the plastic. There we go. Good grief. That was a hash. Cool. So now we get this view. So um, to make any progress now, we've got to take out the green screws. These green screws are really long and they go all the way through the console. So we're going to take these boys out. Uh, what are those? T10s, I think. Yeah, my T10s on the other side of the room. Oh, you know, I think that might be T12s. The T10 is fitting, so that'll do. Right, that's the green guys out. So now I believe we should be able to flip this over and the top should come off. There we go. And that guy's gonna come out as well. There we go. And there's our hard drive. That's what we came here for. So while we're here, we'll just do a visual inspection. It's a little bit dusty, but not horrendous. We'll give this a uh, we'll give this a blast with the air compressor anyway, just to clear out what dust is here. Um, dust uh, can certainly be a build-up in these things. It just depends on where they live. So you know, dust can be a killer. So while you've got the covers off, it's worth just dealing with it. Um, so yeah, cool. Right, hard drive out. Let's go. I think this guy just lifts out. Do I have to? I think I might have to take that power supply out first. Yeah, what about, are you gonna lift out? No, we're screwed in. These two guys. That one as well. And the hard drive has fallen out. Ooh. There we go. And we'll just disconnect that. Okay, so now we've got the hard drive module out. 
Um, just a quick note to, to point out, the top of the drive is very sensitive. It's just a thin bit of metal. And if you press down on that, you will press down right into the drive mechanics. So don't press down on the top of the drive. You can hold it by the sides. The side is just a metal frame. You can squeeze the sides as hard as you want. So hold the drive by the side. I always recommend just holding it in your palm like this. So your palm and your fingers are gripping the sides of the drive. And this gives you a really good hold of the drive but not touching the top at all. So we'll hold it like that. And again, I'm gonna use the T10 just to remove these four outer screws. Okay, and I'll whoop, just pull off the connector block. Ow, damn. Fine, I'll pry off the connector block. There we go. I don't want that to come out. There we go. And there is our bare laptop drive. So this is a one terabyte one. Uh, it's nothing fancy. Um, there's nothing special about these drives at all. They're not specific Xbox drives. It's just a two and a half inch commodity hard drive. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to plug this into my PC and we're going to run diagnostic tests on it. So there's two ways I can do this. Because this is an ordinary serial ATA connection, this will plug into most desktop computers. You can just plug it in and then the computer will just start talking to the drive. Alternatively, if you've got a laptop or you don't want to dig around in your PC, you can buy a, this is called a, uh, a hard drive caddy or an enclosure. Uh, this one's just see-through and this will convert a two and a half inch hard drive like this into an external hard drive. Um, so now I've got a USB connector so I can just plug it into my PC with the USB and run the test that way. So really useful to have some of these hanging around if you deal with drives like this on a regular basis, very handy. Got one, two, three, four, five partitions so far. Well then, well there you go, that's what happens when you try and mount an Xbox hard drive on Windows. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to run up some software called CTools for Windows. CTools for Windows is a free download. Google search CTools for Windows. Hey, there's another one. Um, and uh, you'll get a free download for CTools for Windows. So let's start this guy up. That is now going to scan for hard drives. And I'll accept the license agreement. Right, so... Uh, this computer has got several hard drives connected to it at the moment. Um, now, the one that we want to test, our Xbox hard drive, will be really easy to spot because it's the only one connected by USB. So I'm going to select this one here. This is going to be our Xbox drive because all of these are all connected via other means. So uh, here's our USB drive. The first thing I'm going to do is a basic test. So I'm just hovering over this um, little triangle here and I'm going to do a short generic test on it. So this is a quick test that will just do a confidence test with the drive. So what that's going to do is going to scan a little bit of the outside of the disk, a little bit of the inside of the disk, and just a r bunch of random stuff in the middle, just to sanity check if the drive is just completely screwed or not. Now, passing a short test doesn't mean the drive is okay. However, it might give us an answer on our diagnostic in a couple of minutes instead of waiting a couple of hours for the long test to run. So we're just going to see if it can get through this short test. It's stuttering on the random read. I think it's about to fail. It's been sitting on 9% for too long. Like the short, yeah, there we go. There's our fail. The short test, it should, you know, you saw the inner and the outer test. The, the progress bar was just going Meh, across. Whereas on the random one there, it went uh, 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 bleh, and then died. So there we go. There's our, there's our fail. So we can go to fail info and it will give us some fancy stuff. It will go, oh, bad sectors were found. We don't really care. The point is, so what has happened is it's found a section of the disk that is damaged and is not responding in a timely manner. All this, all the generic test is doing is um, the hard drive is built up of sectors. Each sector can store some data and it's going to go across every sector of the drive and just poll it and see how quickly the drive responds with the data. It doesn't matter what the data is at all. Literally, it's just measuring how long it takes the drive to access that sector and say data. 
Um, so in this case, in the short generic, just while scanning randomly across the drive, it's come across one or more sectors that have taken too long to respond. So that classifies as a drive that is clearly in a state of failure. So if we wanted to, if it had passed this, I then would have moved on and done a long generic. And the long generic would have systematically gone across the entire drive. However, this takes a long time. Um, to put that in perspective, I normally expect a one terabyte drive to take about uh, about one to two hours, well, one and a half to two hours to get through a long generic test. That's assuming it passes. Obviously, if it fails halfway through, then yeah. But as you can see, because the long generic takes up to two hours for a one terabyte drive or even longer if you've got a big one. Like if you've got a two terabyte drive or even a three terabyte, you could be hanging around for four to five hours waiting for the test to run through. This is why we do the short generic test first because you might get an answer in a couple of minutes instead of waiting for it to actually reach the damaged section of the drive. So we've confirmed we've got a failing drive in this. So all we've got to do now is put a new drive in this and then we'll restore. Okay, so what drive are we going to replace our failed one with? Well, I'm on Amazon here. You can go to the location of your choice. And the like for like choice would just be to type in 1TB 2.5 HDD for a 2.5 inch 1 terabyte hard drive. And as you can see, we've got potential options here. We've got a Seagate Barracuda for £39. So that's going to be, I don't know, $40, $45. Um, we've got a Western Digital Blue at 45 so you can just pick the model of your choice. Personally, I would pick the cheapest one. There's going to be, there we go, there's the Toshibas down there. Personally, I would get a Seagate or a uh, Western Digital, um, and I would just go with whichever one is cheaper, uh, would be my advice, to be honest. Um, so this one here, it's £39, and that is available at the start. Oh, that's £4.5 delivery. No, you're all right, mate. I don't have Amazon Prime to be paying for delivery. Yeah, £4 delivery as well. It looks like the Western Digital works out the cheapest then because that's on Prime. So I would probably buy the Western Digital Blue one terabyte. That would be my choice for the replacement. And uh, if we take a look at this guy, is it going to show me? No, we can't see it in the pictures, but uh, I can assure you that connector at the bottom is going to be the same standard SATA connector. So that will fit just fine. So uh, our other option is to fit a solid state drive instead. So if I put in one terabyte SSD and the current best bang for buck on that front is the Samsung 860 QVO. Um, there's the SanDisk SSD plus that is ever so slightly cheaper. However, I'm pretty, I'm, I, I, I would need to check benchmarks, but I'm 99% certain the Samsung QVO is quicker than an SSD plus. So um, yeah, I would probably get this fella. So one terabyte SSD, you can see that I've purchased many of these. I use these in laptops all the time. Laptop and desktop computers where failed hard drives, we're replacing them with SSDs and we need a one terabyte one. This is a really good value for money, one terabyte SSD. Um, so yeah, and again, same deal. So um, this is the same size. However, as you can see, it's a hundred pounds. So it's a lot more expensive than the hard drive is. However, this is going to be more reliable because it's got no moving parts in it. And it's also going to give you faster loading times. Uh, now, I need to talk to my customer about this to find out what they want to pay for. Because obviously, for me, I'm going to be charging my flat fee of £50 labour on this. Um, so they're going to be paying £50 plus the cost of parts. So if, I, if, if they're buying a hard drive for £45 plus my £50, it's going to cost them about £95 or £100. I will probably round up the cost of the hard drive and just call it a clean £50 labour, £50 for hard drive. That's how I, do, that's how I usually do my pricing. Um, so I'd be charging £100 quid to fix it. Um, or if we did the SSD, they'd be looking at £150. Now, of course, we've got to consider the fact that, you know, a secondhand Xbox One S is some is around about the £150 marker. So we've got to consider value for money. But the other thing as well is that while a lot of people will be like, oh, I'll just buy a secondhand one. But then if you buy a secondhand one, you've got no idea what condition the hard drive in that one will be in either. So sometimes, despite the fact of the repair cost, better the devil you know. You've spent money up, uh, putting new parts into this Xbox, but at least you know those parts have been replaced. So 
you know, you it's up to you. Different people have different opinions on this. I tell the customer what their options are. I say, this is what we can do. This is what I would do if it were my console. For me personally, I would fix it because better the devil you know. Um, but I leave the choice up to them and they can either take it or leave it. And if they want to, they can say, no, nope, I'm not gonna fix it. And I will put the Xbox back together, hand it over to them and they can take it away, no charge at all. And if they want to, they can go somewhere else and get the hard drive replaced because they got a free diagnostic out of me. That's their choice. Some I win, some I lose. Um, however, most likely they're going to take the repair in my experience, and that's why I run that risk. Anyway, so here's your options there. So I would personally, I would put an SSD in it if it were my Xbox. Um, however, it's not mine. It's not up to me. For the sake of this video, um, because I happen to already have one of these SSDs, because I keep these in stock, I'm going to put this in it just as a demonstration and we're going to fit this to it, restore the system software and get this Xbox back into working condition just so I can show you how what that would look like. I'm not actually sure what it looks like myself so we're going to learn together. So here's our SSD and as you can see it's exactly the same size, Ugh, I'll just grab another hard drive. It's exactly the same size as a two and a half inch hard drive. It looks identical and it's got the same connector on it. So as you can see, this is a drop-in replacement for any two and a half inch hard drive and it's functionally identical. Although the inner workings of it are completely different, as far as the device is concerned, it's exactly the same. It's just a really fast drive and it works exactly the same. Uh, so let's get this guy fitted up. So here's the cable, we'll plug that guy into there. Very stiff connector that, it should, doesn't need to be that stiff, but there we go. That goes on there. And I'll put these screws back in. Of course, another option that we could also do is we could fit a smaller SSD. I've got a Crucial BX500 here. This is a 480 gigabyte SSD. These cost about 55 pounds or $60 at current price. So obviously this guy is much more affordable, it's significantly cheaper. However, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a console gamer, so I don't know. However, I hear that a lot of console games are hilariously large these days. And so I don't think a 500 gigabyte class SSD is going to cut it. I don't think you want to put anything smaller than a one terabyte into one of these. Um, however, as I say, that's a choice that you can make. If you know you don't need big storage, you could put a small low capacity SSD in there if you wanted to. You could always take it out at a later date and use it in another project. Cool, that guy is ready to go back in the console. Uh, before I put it in there though, I'm just going to go out to my back room, get my airline and just air compressor this down just to remove all of this dust here. It's not awful, but we can make it better. There's our SSD sitting pretty. So we'll put the top cover on. That just positions over there. And we've just got to steer this around some of these uh, pads here. I'm just going to use my prying tool just to hold the pads out of the way. There we go. And now the front panel goes on. So I'm going to start from the front here and just put that in, tuck that in there and just lean it over so that way the front panel will push onto those buttons at the, at the front. And then I might just need to press this bar back just to get it sitting right. There we go. And that's just gone in perfectly first time. Easy peasy. Much better than the original Breeze Block Xbox Ones. Those are an animal to take apart. And now the big, long green boys go back in. There we go. One assembled Xbox. It's just for kicks. I'm going to turn this on and just see what it does when it's started up with a completely empty drive in it. Because obviously it's got no system software, so we're not done yet. But I wonder what results we get. That would be interesting. Oh, there we go. So we actually get a uh, a BIOS-style error code. Something went wrong. 
So system error, I would imagine that system error probably means no boot device found or something like that. Um, there's an option there to reset or update this Xbox. Can we do this without having to download any software? That'll make my life easier. I'm just using a wired controller here, by the way. Uh, reset this, restore factory defaults. So yeah, you can see in the top right there, offline system update. So we could go, we could download that. I wonder if we can do it over network though. That'd be really cool. No, that doesn't seem right. Okay, let's try downloading the software then. So that's xbox.com slash xbox one slash offline update. And that takes me here. Troubleshoot update issues, perform an offline system update. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, download the offline system update file. Uh, how big is it? Uh, six gigabytes, that's fine. I've got an eight gigabyte flash drive to hand here, so that's fine. Right, plug your USB flash drive into your computer. Open the system update file, OSU1. Ah, oh God. This flash drive, this flash drive is currently formatted to recover a Chromebook. And this is what the Chromebook update looks like. It's nightmarish. It's bizarre. And I have no comprehension of why it's like this. Excuse me. All right, there we go. Where was I? OSU1. Right, there's our... Okay, we've got a five gigabyte download in action. I'm just going to wait for that to download. I'll be back in a moment. Download complete. Let's open that up. And... This is zipped, so I'm going to drag this out to my desktop folder to unzip it. And answer my phone. The hell, there's nothing useful in here. Let's check those instructions again. Click save to save the console update zip file to your computer. Okay, I've done that. Unzip the file by right clicking it and extracting it. Copy the system update file from the zip file to your flash drive. Bloody hell. Okay, so we just copy that entire folder. Okay, so that goes onto the flash drive. Cool, let me just format my flash drive. And the documentation does specify to use NTFS as the format, so we'll do that. And we'll drag dollar system update onto new volume. There we go. And now I've got to wait for that to transfer, which is gonna take ages, because this is a really garbage flash drive I'm using. Sorry, a rubbish flash drive. See you in about 10 minutes. My transfer is complete, so I now have my new volume flash drive with the dollar system update folder in it. So let's safely eject that. Uh, that one. And now I'm going to plug this into the back of the Xbox. And having done that, the offline system update option has now appeared as valid. So let's hit A. Preparing console. Groovy. And I can see the activity light on the flash drive is now flashing. So presumably it's now going to copy all of that data from the flash drive onto the new drive. It's almost there. No, it's not. It's got miles to go. We've just started. Uh, so presumably this is probably going to take about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Um, the majority of this is going to be just copying the data onto the SSD. Once we've got everything onto the SSD, the rest of the setup will take will be really quick because the SSD can reorganize data super fast. However, this flash drive I'm using is really slow. The reason why I use this flash drive is because all of my other ones have got stuff on it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, the point is we've got this progress bar to go and then I think we'll be done. Uh, I'll see you in a mo. Uh. That was a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. It's only been a couple of minutes. Uh, it sounds like the read speed of this flash drive is significantly better than the write speed. Okay, we're done. It's going through various um, languages. I'm waiting for it to get back to English again. Can we manually advance this? No. Um, what happens if I hit start over? English, there we go. I pressed the menu button and got English. English. Uh, United Kingdom. Right, please choose a connection. There we go. So it's finding Wi-Fi networks now, which is more than what we had when we started this. So I'm going to connect it to my Wi-Fi network. Your console is connected to the internet. Awesome. 
It is time to update. Okay, next you will sign in with your Microsoft account. Right, I was having trouble with the customer's password there, so it looks like I got a bad password from them. So I've just signed in with my own Microsoft account for now, just for demonstration. And it's now asking us about enhanced error reporting. I'm not interested in enhanced error reporting, so I'm just going to turn that off. Okay, and uh, yeah, they talk to publishers. That makes sense. Right, I'm just going to say no barriers for now because as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to sign out of this Xbox anyway. So uh, obviously you can select which one is appropriate. Personally, I would always recommend having passkey because that means you've just got to actually confirm with a PIN number or something similar before you actually do anything that might be bad, like buying stuff or failing that. If this is um, uh, if this is going to be used by the kids or someone who um, or someone who is not you, you probably want to lock it down. For now, I'm just going to say no barriers, just for simplicity, though. Groovy. Uh, I'm going to skip this for now. And no, I don't have any of this. Choose your time zone. Uh, yeah, London, that's fine with me. And then for energy saving or instant on, again, this is up to you, really. Um, personally, if it were me and I had my console sitting under a TV, I'd probably have it set to instant on. Um, however, if it's a console that likely gets moved around a lot, as kids sometimes do, because they're taking it upstairs to plug into the upstairs TV or something like that, you're going to want to, you're going to, want to leave this on energy saving. I'm going to say energy saving for now, just because if in doubt. I mean, heck, it's got to be switched off to take it home anyway. And yeah, automatic updates are good. Hi, Nethersam. Nethersam is my private identity. There we go. Um, and we have got a working Xbox again. So um, that's that. This is all done now. And we've got, we're back to the dashboard. So from here on, you can set everything up as and how you want to. So um, we're all finished. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Um, I'm not going to do any further testing with this. Um, if I... I could try installing games to check load times for an SSD and stuff like that. However, I don't know how long these things normally take to load anyway. I'm probably the wrong place to ask for that. However, I hope this guide was useful. If you've got an Xbox and you think it's got a bad hard drive in it, then uh, now you've seen how to do it. Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.